Hello, hello, hello. We are going to paint a cute kitty with watercolor just in time for Mother's Day if your mom likes cats. If we haven't met, I'm Viv. Welcome to Art with Viv. So let's just jump right in and get started. I first sketched the cat, put it on there. I also drew an oval around the cat just because I needed a guide for the flowers that I'm going to put around him. Then I got some blue and I took my number two brush, a really small brush, and I put the blue into his eye and then I just took some clean water and sort of faded it out toward the bottom of the eye. Now I'm getting a really darker blue and I'm just going to drop that in while it's still wet right across the top to give the shadow to the eye. His, her, his or her eyelid is casting a shadow over that eye so we're just going to darken that up while it's still wet so there will be a nice soft transition between the darker blue and the light blue. We're going to pop over here, do the same thing to this eye. Now I have also left where his iris, not his iris, his pupil is blank and where the highlights are. I left the white paper showing through. Again, I added the blue, then took a little bit of clean water and sort of faded that down toward the bottom. Now I'm adding a little bit of the darker blue while it's still wet again, just to have that shadow going across the top part of his or her eye. I don't know about this cat. It's not my cat, so I'm not sure if it's a his or her. Now I took a little brown, a little pink, I mixed it together and we just painted in the nose. I'm also going to take a brown and pink mixture um, so it's sort of a pinky brown and go ahead and fill in the inside of the kitten's ears and then at the bottom some of that mixture with just a tad bit more brown in it I am going around the edge where it has some shadows while it's still wet so that they can blend together I'm letting that water do the work people let the water do the work anytime you can do it plus it makes a nice soft transition between the darker and the lighter pink so I've got my shadows in the ears I'm going to add a little bit more of this mixture right to the nose where I want some darker areas on that kitten's nose I'm mixing up some sort of a brownish red color um, and that's going to be the color of the cat well the color of the cat shadows so I'm going to go ahead and just start painting that in and I've sort of drawn out the shapes of the shadows on his little face so that I'll have a guide to go by and I just wet that little area where he's dark and now I'm just dropping in that sort of reddish brown color that I've mixed up. I'm being careful to go around the very front part of his little muzzle because it's it's lighter than the the shadowy part that we're painting right now. I'm going to go ahead over here do the same thing drop in some watery um, that watery red brown mixture and then I'm just going to go over here and pick up a little bit more drop it in while it's still wet and let that water do the work of blending for me so now we have gotten that I'm adding a little bit more paint into the areas where I want it to be a little bit darker I don't want it to be you know I want it to have some variation in those shadows. I want a little be some darker in some areas and lighter in some areas. So now I'm going to go ahead and put that shadow under this chin. I'm just going to go ahead in here and pull that, pull those little sort of strands out so it looks like he's furry and he has a shadow right between his nose. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that red color in, that reddish brown color, and then pick up more paint while it's still wet and drop it in there. And I'm making sure that those edges are fringy so that it looks more like fur. There's not, you know, straight hard edges because the cat is really clumpy and furry. So we're going to go ahead above his nose, put in some more shadow, and I'm just working away where I see some of the darker shadows first. I know most of the time you do your um, watercolor, you go light to dark. I'm just going ahead and plotting in some of the darker shadows first. Um, but if you feel better, you can do a, a light wash over the whole cat and do it that way. I'm just doing it a little backwards today. It's okay. It's just, you know, sometimes I break the rules. And, you know, you can too if you want to, but you don't have to. You could do a wash over this cat with a really, really pale, light brownish red and then layer it up. But for me, I am just sort of mapping out those really dark colors first. And he's got sort of a little ring around the inner part of his ear that's a really dark brown, brownish red. So I'm going to go ahead and paint those in. 
He's got some shadows around his ear. Just going to go ahead and do that. Now that his eyes are dry, I'm just picking up a mixture. And it's a black mixture that I made myself or a dark mixture that's going to stand in for black and painting in his pupils and then putting those dark areas that go sort of line his eye like makeup you know how sometimes animals they have like dark rings around their eyes and to me it makes them look like they have on mascara and eyeliner and so that's what I always think about when I put on when they have those dark rings and I put them on there I'm always saying I'm putting his makeup on or her makeup on or what whichever and uh, I also took some two little dots and put in there for his nostrils. And I am going ahead in here where the corner of his eye and um, the back corner, those two edges have that darker rim around his eye. So I went ahead and dropped that darker color in there. And now I'm just gonna start adding some med medium tones. And I am doing a really wet wash of this reddish brown that I mixed and I'm just, going over it and doing just sort of fur like strokes and I'm trying to make sure that I keep my strokes going into the direction that the actual natural fur is growing I don't want to you know go crossways if it's growing up and down that that'll make it look not right definitely will not be convincing so now I'm going in there and I'm starting to darken up some of my areas where I want some really dark shadows across his nose and I wet that first before I drop that dark color in there so that it'll blend a little better. I'm going to put some little shadows under his top lips and under his chin, just a little bit darker under there, just so that his chin comes forward some and his little muzzle comes forward. And while that's still wet up there between his eyes, I'm going ahead and adding even more darker brown color to get that in there and now I'm just taking a little bit of clean water and I just softened up around those ears now I'm gonna go ahead in here and just start adding more layers of color trying to make sure that I keep you know stay dark where it needs to be dark and lighter and then get in the mid-tones again I am doing this exactly the opposite way that most people do watercolor but it can be done this way you know everyone has their own style I don't know I actually do normally work light to dark I don't know why I decided to do it this way sometimes I just get a little wild quirkiness to me and I say let's try something different so that's what I'm doing here I am going from dark to light and um and it's working it and it works out it was working out okay i probably if i was a beginner i would not try this i would go from light to dark because it is much easier to go darker than it is to lighten up a dark space you've already made so here i'm just making sure i get in some more shadows around his little nose he's got a lot of shadows and light spots around his nose and i've switched over to my bigger brush and I have made a really, really pale wash of that reddish brown. And I'm taking a really light touch with my larger brush. It's a number eight. I think that's a number eight. And I'm just going over all the light areas with this first wash. This, well, this isn't really the first wash, but this first really, really pale wash. Let's put it that way. So I'm going over the whole cap basically with this really pale watery wash. It's the same exact color as the shadows I've just diluted it with water so that it becomes more pale and I am just going over all those areas and that begins to soften up some of those shadows so uh, that helps with making a little bit more unified and I'm still adding darkening up spots now I'm going to start really darkening up some of these lighter spots getting those mid-tones in where they need to be and I'm also just doing the little wet on wet. His nose looks funny. I don't know what, where I went wrong with that, but it's okay. At the end, it looks fine. It's a perfectly cute kitten. So I don't know. It's something about the way I have painted that shadow in that's got a kind of cattywonka looking. Now I'm just adding some more of that paint going around the edges of the kitten. And again, I'm painting sort of like fur-like brush strokes. And I'm making sure they go in the exact direction that the 
fur is growing so that it looks more natural and more convincing and I know what the problem is now that I'm looking at it on that one side there is there needs to be a darker shadow on the, his eye where the shadow just sort of stops and it's just a little triangle there needs to be a little bit darker shadow there I need to soften up this nose some put some more shadows around here and while that is drying, I went ahead and mixed up a really, really watery wash of blue. It's the same blue I used in his eyes. And I'm going to do just paint right inside that oval all around the kitten. I told you I am doing things backwards. Usually you do your background first in watercolor, but I am just being off the chain today. I'm just, I don't know what has gotten into me. I'm just deciding I'm going to be a rebel. And so I'm painting around the kitten into that oval space that I that I um, drew out around him and that oval is going to act as a marker for you know sort of a guide for the, where I'm going to paint my flowers around the kitty they're really loose flowers they're not complicated anybody can paint them you don't have to get you know real stressed out and um th but I did get a little carried away and I just started painting flowers everywhere in the you know on the outside of that that oval so sometimes that happens too so now I've let that dry. You want to let it dry completely. I've let my kitty cat dry. I'm going to come in and do his little whisker dots, his little freckles where the whiskers come out. Get those on each side of his little nose. And um, darken up the very top, going across the top of his little nose. And I'm still, I really think I need another shadow around that eye. Hopefully I will get it in there. Now I'm just doing some fur marks and that is darkening up that space where I really feel like it needed to be a little bit darker so that did help with that. Sort of unified that little section there. It's like I had two sections. It had a really dark section and then that really, really almost two pale section. So adding that added a little bit of unity to it. I'm darkening up again that shadow that goes across the bridge of his nose between his eyes and darkening up some of those other little um, shadow areas and I'm just just painting tiny little strokes little hair strokes just to give the cat texture make him look furry um, this is just the style I do there's different ways of making animals look furry but this is just what I'm doing for this painting um, you can just do it in sections some people just do it in like color sections and make it look more um, patchwork almost so I'm just adding a little bit more shadow across this little n muzzle there and then across his lips she's got some makeup going out sort of like winged eyeliner I went ahead and put those in darkening it up around her chin and under her chin just to get that a little bit darker I am pulling out some of those little shadows that are going across her li her top lips where her little whiskers poke out. I guess I've decided she's a she. And I'm just darkening up some more of those patches of fur on her chest. And we're going to come down the side of her face and add a few more texture marks. And I'm just really layering the color, trying to get it built up and also the cat to look a little bit more unified. Now I am just taking a damp brush and sort of smoothing out around his, her eyes. She has a little bit of a light spot around her eyes, so I went ahead and just sort of lifted up a little bit of that paint right around the edges. And um, now I'm just adding some darker shadows to her little pink nose. It's sort of a pinky brown nose. I'm adding a little bit more of that pink to her ears to make them a little bit darker. And I think she's looking like a cat. I mean, that's all we're going for. We're not. We're not trying to win any prizes for being overly realistic we just want our cat so now I've jumped over to the roses these are those simple roses you just do little comma strokes and you have them facing each other you overlap them and you want to get more water on your brush as the rose gets bigger you want to add more water to the outside petals and you want to add more paint to the inside circles those little commas so that it's darker in the middle and a little bit lighter as it opens up toward the edges now i'm just dropping in a little yellow just to give it a little um just a little interest i just didn't want it to be a solid 
pink rose so I've added in some yellow while it's still wet and I'm gonna just go ahead and keep fiddling with it a little bit adding a little color here and there kind of cleaning up those edges but these are really simple roses to do like I said they're just you do comma strokes that actually face each other and sort of curl around each other and you want to overlap those as you go and you just keep using that same technique going around and clustering some roses here again it's just comma strokes and they're sort of facing each other you want it tighter in the center you want it darker in the center you can come and add a little bit of yellow or whatever other color you want in there while it's still wet and let that kind of blend together again not looking for pure realism these are really loose flowers and after doing that sort of tight cat that sort of the cat was a little bit more involved in detail i thought you know we probably could just do some loose flowers going around this going around this oval that we drew And you can mix up some greens and you might want to add a little bit of um, leaves or foliage and you can just paint those in you can also add yellow or a darker blue or something to those leaves to give them a little interest it's up to you um, I'm just making mine green right now I did go with a little bit of a lighter green for that the second and third leaf and then I'm just dropping in some darker green right around the edge and it's up to you where you put your leaves in your foliage it's there's no right or wrong way to do this you just do it the best way or however you would like it it's your painting just go for it so I'm adding in a little bit of foliage and then I'm gonna add some different kinds of flowers we don't want to stick to just roses we can go ahead and add some different flowers once we get our our greenery in there and I, I'm just placing it where I want to. I did not draw this out. I'm just doing it, you know, as I go, just deciding where the placement is. It probably would have been better if I had drawn it out first, but I didn't. So I'm just going with what I'm doing. And, and it's okay. I'm just adding a little bit of lighter green, a little bit of darker green in the shadows. And it looks fine to me. Again, this would make a cute card for, you know, for Mother's Day if your mom likes kittens. It's just a really cute motif here, a little cute design. Sometimes I just want the cutest things. I don't always want to do heavy, serious paintings. So now I've mixed up a little bit of coral color. It's a little bit of orange, a little bit of pink, and I'm doing some sort of like um, cosmos maybe, and just painting those in there. So just putting the petals around an imaginary center and I get those in there I'm going to come to this other side to balance it out make sure I've got the same kind of flowers over here at the end of these roses so that's all I'm doing I'm not going to show you how to paint each one since these are really loose they're really easy to paint you can paint any kind of flowers you like 
you could leave the flowers out and just do like a gold uh, gold frame around the cat. You don't even have to do the flowers. I just decided I wanted to do flowers. It's springtime and I'm in the flower, flowery mood. So once you get those in there, then you might want to add, um, I think there's a lot of red here. So once I get these in, I think I'm going to add some blue flowers to the mix. Maybe a darker blue. I think that would look good. I don't want to keep all the flowers in that same pinky orange. I'm also going around while the flowers are still wet and I'm adding just a little bit of tiny purple, but you can use whatever color you want. Just a little bit of purple to the very ends near that center so that the centers are a little bit darker. And I'm doing that again while it's still wet. So it'll kind of spread up into the petal a little bit and it'll leave a soft transition. So now I'm just going to mix up some blue and I think I'm going to do some, some flowers that are like triangle flowers. They could be not really snapdragons. I don't think I know of any blue snapdragons, but have that same sort of shape or almost like lavender, only ours is blue or sage or salvia, something like that. But just make it into a cone shape. All it is is a lot of little dots and you're going skinny at the top and fat at the bottom, sort of like a Christmas tree. And that's the shape that you're doing them. And, and I think that does add a little bit to these to this flower arrangement because I got way too much pink and orange in there for my taste. I like it, but I, it just needs a little blue to break it up. And since we've got the blue eyed cat and the blue background inside of the oval, I think this darker blue does a good job of that. And it keeps everything sort of working together. So I like that. It's nice and unified. So here we are. I've almost finished with all the flowers. I didn't want to show you me painting every single one. That would get boring. It's all the same technique for each one of each type of the flower. You do it the same exact way. So now I'm just adding in. I've got a little blue green on my palette and I'm just adding in some leaves, some smaller leaves that are sort of jiggity jaggedy. It's just really doing dots down onto the paper and little just little shapes i'm not even trying to make it look like a real leaf i just want it to be green and to take up some space that's my whole goal here so i'm going to work my way around doing that with this green and i'm using different greens i've got blue green i've got a little yellow green i've got a little medium just kind of run-of-the-mill green and i'm doing different greens in different areas trying to balance those out as well as we're going and I'm, oh, I'm getting, I'm, I like this. I like this a lot. It's so easy. It's nice and decorative. There's nothing really difficult about it. Anybody could paint these little flowers. And it's pretty. I think it's, it's a pretty painting. So I'm going to add some more, go up here with some more foliage here and there. I'm going to try to get this, um, this oval to meet over here at the, at the top. For right now, I'm adding in some of the larger leaves around the roses all up here. Again, you can do it however you want to. It's up to you. It's your painting. I'm coming back while it's still wet, adding a little bit of a darker green into some of those leaves that I just painted. And put a, a little bit more of um, sort of those little scrappy looking leaves. They're sort of rough, they're not rounded, they're kind of rough and, and dotty. But again, you can do yours however you want to do those. And I'm just adding a little bit more color to these leaves over here. I'm gonna take the mixture that we use, that black mixture that we use for the cat's pupils, and I'm just gonna do the centers of our Cosmos. I know Cosmos centers are usually yellow, but I don't think it would show up as well on this. And it's so busy anyway, I'm just going with the black. You can do whatever you would like. If you want to do an orange or a yellow, feel free. Do it the way that it looks good to you. Use your artistic intuition and paint it the way you want to. Now I'm just adding a little bit more. The, these are dried a little bit, these roses. So I'm just adding some darker marks in there so that it defines more petals so it's not one big blob of color. That makes it look more like it has some petals when you put a little darker mark in there. But you have to wait for it to dry to do that so that they show up and they don't just blend in. Now I've got my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. If you've got white gouache, get that out. And I'm just going to go ahead and 
lighten up. I left the highlight, I left the paper shining through, but it, it got a little bit lost. So I just went ahead and put the highlights in the eyes with that white. And now I'm just doing some whisker marks and just sort of breaking up some of those areas that got a little bit too flat and static. So I'm just brushing some of the white into some of the areas um, that need a little brightening up. I'm also going around the edge of the cat with that white so that it, it's, um, it has like a little light air halo around it almost and of course around his little ears they're really white on the edges or kind of buff colored and I'm just getting those little white areas in there right around the edges and it's breaking up some of those darker shapes that I have in there that I'm not really loving so just break them up with some of the white And that also gives it another another value. Right now we've, we're working with about three values. So now we've gotten a fourth value in there and that helps it a little bit as far as the fur goes. Now there's, you know, they've got really dark values in his eyes, in her eyes and across her nose, but the, the main ones are kind of similar. So I'm just adding some white where I, where I see it needs a little highlight, a little breaking up of some some fuzziness we need it to be fuzzy around the ears so I'm just doing little tiny little hair marks and just lightening up some of these fur fur sections on her chest so you can call this finished now and I think it looks really good like this but I can't stop fiddling so I think I'm just gonna add some more flowers and take the flowers all the way to the edge of the paper going to do the same exact technique that we used on you know the flowers from before and I'm just going to add them all the way to the edge of the paper because I can't stop fiddling with it but you can stop here and have just sort of the oval cat the oval flowers around the cat but I'm I'm just taking it a little step further again this part's optional you don't have to do it you could even make your oval a little bit smaller so that, that it doesn't the flowers don't run off the edge of the page like mine did but it's up to you again so I'm just gonna add in a little bit more flowers in these corners and down the sides and call it a day I'm just trying to replicate those three kinds of flowers I got I got roses I got cosmos I got little blue bonnets blue bonnet looking flowers and there we go I have filled it all in I've added more greenery and I I like it. I like both ways. I think both ways are pretty. They make a really nice card for somebody. It doesn't even have to be a Mother's Day card, just a cat lover. If a cat, if you have a cat lover in your life, this would be great. A great little card. So there you go. I think it looks good. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you soon.